Hemi. It's more than a word. In the automotive world, it's a threat. It's a promise of raw, uncompromising American power. For over 70 years, that one four-letter word stamped onto the side of an engine block or stuck to a fender has sold millions of trucks, sedans, and muscle cars. It's a name that conjures the guttural idol of a 1969 Dodge Charger and the violent whine of a modern Hellcat supercharger. It's a brand that is in itself an identity. Think about it. Ford has EcoBoost, Honda has VTEC. Those are technologies. Dodge has Hemi, it's a title. But what is a Hemi? Is it, as many critics claim, just a brilliant marketing trademark owned by Dodge? A hollow badge stuck on a standard V8? Or is it a genuinely superior piece of engineering? The answer, as it turns out, is a fascinating mix of both. The truth is buried in a simple, elegant piece of high school geometry, a lesson in the fundamental physics of an explosion, and one of the most successful advertising campaigns in history. To understand the Hemi, you first have to understand the single biggest problem every engine designer faces, breathing. At its core, an internal combustion engine is just an air pump. It follows four steps. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. It sucks in air and fuel, squeezes it, ignites it with a bang, and blows out the exhaust. The more air and fuel you can get into that cylinder for the bang, the more power you make. The problem is that most engines, especially in the early days of the V8, were terrible at breathing. They were essentially trying to run a marathon while breathing through a coffee stirrer. Most engines used what's called a wedge head. Imagine the top of the cylinder. It's a flat, bathtub-shaped or wedge-shaped space. Into this cramped area, engineers had to cram two valves, an intake valve for the air and fuel, and an exhaust valve for the fumes. Because space was tight, the valves had to be small and sit right next to each other. This created a massive bottleneck. The air-fuel mixture had to make a sharp 90-degree turn to get into the cylinder, and the exhaust fumes had to make another sharp turn to get out. This turbulence and restriction choked the engine, limiting its power. This is where the genius of the Hemi enters the archives. Instead of a flat, cramped wedge, Chrysler's engineers in the late 1940s perfected a design based on a different shape, a hemisphere. A perfect, smooth, clean dome. Why? Because a dome, or the top half of a sphere, is a marvel of geometry. It allows for two massive advantages. First, massive valves. Because the valves were no longer on a flat roof, they could be placed on the opposite sides of the dome angled away from each other. Think of it this way. In a wedge head, you're trying to fit two small closet doors on the same wall. In a Hemi, you can put two giant barn doors on opposite walls. This allowed an enormous, unrestricted volume of air to flood the cylinder. Second, and just as important, this created a cross-flow design. The air-fuel mixture entered from a port on one side of the head, shot straight into the cylinder, and the exhaust fumes exited on the opposite side. It was a straight, clean shot. No sharp turns, no turbulence, just a highly efficient river of air and power. This incredible breathing ability is what engineers call high volumetric efficiency. The engine could inhale a volume of air far greater than its actual size, leading to truly massive explosions. But the genius didn't stop there. The physics of the dome offered two other unseen benefits. That central spherical shape allowed the spark plug to be placed at the North Pole, the exact top center of the dome. When it fired, the explosion, the flame front, would travel outwards evenly in all directions, like dropping a pebble in the center of a round pond. This created a fast, clean, and complete burn, pushing down on the piston with uniform force. And finally, a sphere has the least amount of surface area for any given volume. This meant that less of the explosion's precious heat energy was lost or soaked into the metal of the engine block. More of that heat stayed in the chamber where it was used for its one true purpose, creating pressure to shove the piston down and turn the crankshaft. It was, in almost every measurable way, a more powerful and more efficient design. Of course, Chrysler didn't invent the hemispherical head. Its roots go back to the earliest engines, and it was used with great success in World War II aircraft engines, like the one in the P-47 Thunderbolt. But Chrysler was the company that perfected it, and in 1951, they bet their entire brand on it. 
their first-generation V8 was called the Firepower. In an era of new V8s from Ford and GM, the Firepower was an engineering statement. It was heavy, it was incredibly complex to build, and it was expensive. But it made so much more power than anything its competition had. It immediately became the engine of choice for hot rodders and racers. This was just the opening act. The legend was born in 1964. Chrysler was getting beaten by Ford on the high-banked ovals of NASCAR. In a desperate bid to win, their engineers were given a blank check to create the ultimate racing engine. They took the Hemi concept and scaled it up to a monstrous 426 cubic inches, nearly 7 liters. The engine was so physically massive with such wide, gaping heads that the engineers nicknamed it the Elephant. It wasn't just an engine, it was a weapon. Its debut at the 1964 Daytona 500 is the stuff of legend. It wasn't just a win, it was an annihilation. Hemi-powered Plymouths finished first, second, and third. Utah. It was so fast, so dominant, that a terrified NASCAR literally banned it for the 1965 season, claiming it wasn't a production engine. This right here is the moment the myth was forged. The Hemi was too good for the competition. To get his engine unbanned, NASCAR's rules said Chrysler had to homologate it. They had to sell this exact race engine to the general public. So in 1966, they did. The street Hemi was born, and it became the undisputed king of the American muscle car wars. It was dropped into Dodge Chargers, Plymouth Cutis, and Roadrunners, creating some of the most desirable and valuable cars in history. On the street, the engine was famously terrible. It was finicky, it chugged gasoline at an alarming rate, it hated cold weather, and it was notoriously difficult to keep in tune. But none of that mattered. In a straight line from one green light to the next, it was unbeatable. It was, quite simply, God. But the Hemi's greatest strengths, its size, its complexity, its focus on ultimate power, would also be its downfall. The very dome shape that made it breathe so well was, as it turned out, terrible for emissions. The wide, flat-topped piston and the open dome created quench areas where fuel could hide from the flame front, leading to massive amounts of unburnt hydrocarbons or pollution. When the 1973 oil crisis hit and new EPA regulations took hold, the Hemi's fate was sealed. It was too big, too expensive, too complex, and too dirty for the new world. By 1972, after a legendary but brief run, the king was dead. For 30 years, the name lay dormant. The word Hemi was nothing more than a faded decal at classic car shows. Then in 2003, Chrysler, now part of Daimler Chrysler, was in trouble. Their Dodge Ram truck was lagging behind Ford and Chevy, and their V8 engines were old and underpowered. They needed a hero. So their marketing department reached back into the archives and pulled out the most powerful weapon they had, that four-letter word. They launched a brand new 5.7-liter V8, and they didn't just call it the 5.7, they called it the Hemi. The resulting ad campaign was a masterstroke of cultural genius. A guy pulls up next to another guy in a Dodge Ram and asks the simple iconic question, that thing got a Hemi? It was simple, it was a little obnoxious, and it tapped into 30 years of dormant brand equity. The campaign was a spectacular success, selling millions of trucks and cementing Dodge's new identity. But this brings us to the core question, is the new Hemi a real Hemi? The answer technically is no. If you pull the head off a modern 5.7 liter or 6.4 liter Hemi, you won't find a perfect smooth hemisphere. You'll find a complex polysphere or twin squish design. The classic dome was simply too inefficient for modern emissions. However, and this is the critical point, it is absolutely a Hemi in principle. It is not about the exact geometry, it is about the philosophy. The new engine retains the most important advantages. The valves are still on opposite sides of the chamber in a cross-flow design. They are still massive, allowing for best-in-class breathing. And it still uses a central spark, now two spark plugs per cylinder, for a clean, efficient burn. It is the spirit of the Hemi, rebooted for the 21st century, solving the emissions and drivability problems that killed its 1960s ancestor.
The Hemi became an icon because it was the real deal. It was a genuine physics-based advantage that dominated on Sunday and sold on Monday. But it stayed an icon because Dodge's marketers understood that you weren't just buying an engine, you were buying a piece of the legend. It's the rare, perfect marriage of engineering brilliance and marketing mastery. From the 426 Elephant to the 1,000 horsepower Elephant Crate engine, from the 2003 Ram to the supercharged Hellcat TRX, the Hemi isn't just an engine, it's a brand character. It represents Dodge's entire philosophy, a little loud, a little unapologetic, and fundamentally, undeniably powerful.